my conductors. So now let's talk about the internal genitalia of the female. So what does internal genitalia of the female means? It means these are those female genital organs that are internally located. And if you want to inspect those organs, you will require some instrumentation for that. So now let's talk about the parts that is included in the internal genitalia of the female. So the first part that is included that is called is vagina which is also called birth canal. The second part is it involves the uterus. It involves the one pair of the fallopian tubes. Fallopian tubes is also called ovary duct, which is also called uterine tube or salpenges. And it consists of one pair of the ovaries. So, and female consists of vagina, uterus, one pair of fallopian tubes, and one pair of the ovaries. The ovaries is considered as a primary sex organ for the female, while vagina, uterus, and fallopian tube, it is considered as a secondary sex organ in the female. So now let's detail in detail. So now let's talk about, let's uh, draw the diagram of the internal genitalia of the female. So, that is a diagram of the internal genitalia of the female. Students, it is a diagram of the internal genitalia of the female. So that is, this region is called vagina. That is cervix. This is uterus. That is fallopian tube. And this is ovary. So. What are the parts of internal female genitalia? That is vagina, uterus, fallopian tube, or let's discuss which part of internal female genitalia and detail. Now, first, that is vagina. So, vagina is also called as birth canal. Vagina is fibromuscular tube. It is fibromuscular tube. which runs in upward and backward direction to the cervix. And vagina is an internal genitalia and actually it is an organ that uh, combines the internal female genitalia with the external female genitalia. And it consists of, it consists of epithelium, that thrown into various folds. And that is called as rugi. And because of this rugi, vagina has a capacity to distend during the childbirth. Now, vagina consists of anterior wall and posterior wall. Anterior wall is 7.5 cm long, while posterior wall is 9 cm lung. Vagina has an important structure that is called as fornices. So what is fornices? Fornices is the hollow structure that is between the and there is one anterior, one posterior and two lateral fornices. Out of all these fornices, the posterior fornices it is considered very important because of its highly association with the pouch of Douglas. So remember this point. And another is, the there is fold of mucous membrane at the entrance of vagina and that is called as the hymen. 
normally hymen consists of actually it is a fold of mucous membrane at the entrance of the vagina so hymen normally it contains one pores sometimes it contains more than one pores through which menstrual blood comes up perforate hymen it lead to the condition by name hematocarpus means that the blood is now accumulating in the vagina and it is very important structure and in some culture it is considered as a primary sign for the virginity but it is misconception remember that hymen is not a primary sign for it is torn or ruptured during first sexual intercourse but it also ruptured digitally or with the tampons so don't forget the point most of the culture it is considered as a primary sign for the virginity but actually it, it is not the primary sign for the virginity it is a misconception and vagina has no secretory gland vagina has no secretory gland now the question is if vagina don't have any secretory gland so where does the secretion of vagina came so the answer to the question is that actually vagina did not don't have any secretory gland but the secretion of vagina actually cervix so we can say that the vagina secretion is actually it is a cervical secretion so remember this vagina has no secretory glands now if we talk about the ph of vagina so the ph of vagina is 3.8 to 4.5 so it means that the ph is acidic ph is acidic and this acidic ph is because of a specific bacteria by name that is called as doudarlin lacto bacillus acidophilus so in the vagina the acidic ph is because of the doudarlin lactobacillus acidophilus basically this bacteria it produce the hydrogen peroxide plus it produce lactic acid and because of lactic acid and hydrogen peroxide the pH of vagina is acidic and that's the reason because of this because of this acidic this point and this is the nature and remember that this deuterly lactobacillus the bacillus bacteria its concentration is not decreasing downward so remember this point now let's the structure of the vagina so vagina consists of three layers basically it has outer layer middle layer and inner layer so now start starting with the structure of the vagina so vagina consists of outer layer middle layer an inner layer so outer layer of vagina it consists of alveolar tissues middle layer of the vagina it consists of smooth muscles while inner layer it consists of stratified squamous epithelium so vagina consists of outer layer middle layer and inner layer outer layer consists of alveolar tissues middle layer consists of muscles while inner layer it consists of stratified squamous now let's talk about the blood supply of the vagina so blood supply of 
vagina. So uh, the arterial blood supply of vagina is from the internal iliac artery. That is from the internal iliac artery and from venous blood supply it is from internal iliac vein. And this internal iliac artery it is further divided into two branches that is uterine artery and vaginal artery. And these uterinal artery and vaginal artery they combine together and form the plexus. So that is the blood supply for the vagina. Now let's talk about the functions of vagina. What are the most basic and most important function of the vagina? So the first function is the vagina acts as a excretory channel for menstrual blood flow. So, vagina acts as a excretory channel through the second function is coitus. Vagina acts as a copulatory organ during the insemination. So, it, it has a capacity to collect the semen. And the third one is it helps in the delivery of the baby. So what are the main functions of the vagina? It is an excretory channel through which the second function is that, that is coitus. It means that it, it acts as a copulatory organ during the and it collects the it has a capacity to collect the semen and it also helps in the delivery of the baby. So about the first part of internal female genitalia that is now coming to the second part of the internal female genitalia and that is called as the uterus. Now let's talk about uterus. The second part is uterus. So uterus is hollow muscular organ. Uterus is hollow muscular organ and Uterus is somehow it look like as pear shaped in Urdu we call it as Nashpati. So it look like as pear shaped like structure. And the weight of uterus is 50 to 60 gram. Length of uterus is 9 centimeter. Uh, it is 6, six centimeter wide and 4 centimeter thick. Weight of uterus is 50 to 60 gram. Its length is 9 centimeter. It is 6 centimeter wide. 4 centimeter it have thickness. And this uterus, it is placed where it is located. It is placed in the female pelvic. That is female pelvis. And where does it actually? Uh, what is the normal position of the uterus? So the normal position of the uterus has antiverted and antiflexed. These are the normal position of uterus. So what does antiverted means and what are the what is basically antiflex? Antiverted is actually angulation between the long axis of the cervix and vagina and it is usually it is 90 degree so it is the it is angulation between the lung cervix between the lung axis of the cervix of just uh, normal position of the uterus is the antiverted and antiflexed. It is very important. Antiverted is the angulation the axis of the cervix and the of uterus. So now let's talk about the what are that what are the parts what means this so now discuss parts of uterus. 
that how many parts of uterus consist of so uterus consists of the three parts that is uterus parts of uterus now let's discuss the parts of uterus so uterus consists of the fundus it consists of body which is also called uterine cavity and it consists of the yes it consists of cervix which is also called neck of uterus so what are the parts of uterus that is fundus body and cervix so this area this area that is called as cervix this all area it is considered as a body of the uterus that is body of uterus it is also called as uterine cavity and this upper portion is called as fundus so how many parts of the uterus there are the, the first is cervix body and fundus so as we discussed earlier the shape of the uterus it somehow it look like as a pear like so the pear like structure that is now now as we discussed earlier the uterus it look like as a pear now it is divided into three parts that is upper part this whole area that is another part that is first part second part and this part is called as third part so this this is called as fundus of the uterus this all part is called as body of the uterus which is also called uterine cavity and the third portion is called cervix it is also called the neck of uterus now let's talk about the fundus of the uterus now if you see the structure it somehow it look like as a is dome shape okay and at each side of these fundus of the uh, uterus the fallopian tube get inserted here the fallopian tube inserted on both side of the fundus of the uterus okay now let's talk about the body of uterus so body of uterus it is wide wider above and when you move downward it become narrow now the body of uterus it is also and why it is so the reason is the body of the uterine cavity of the uterus it is so much vascular compared to the rest it is very vascular structure because of implantation so it is most important part and the third part is called cervix so cervix is also called the neck of uterus now this the inner portion that is called as cervical canal so the, there is the upper part there is one upper part and there is one lower part of the cervical canal so the upper part of the cervical canal that is term as the internal os that is called as internal os while the lower part of the cervical canal that is term as the external os Student, the out, the upper part of the cervical canal, it is called as internal os, while the lower part of cervical canal, it is termed as external os. So, the parts of uterus are fundus, body, or uterine cavity, and the cervix, which is also called as neck of uterus. So, student, that's all about the parts of uterus. Now, let's move toward the layers of uterus. That how many layers of uterus are? Let's talk about the layers of uterus layers of uterus so there are three layers of the uterus outermost layer middle layer and inner layer that is outer layer middle layer and inner layer so outer layer of the uterus it is called as perimetrium Metrium is a term which is always used for the uterus. Metrium is a word always used for the 
uterus. So the middle layer is called as myometrium and the inner layer is called endometrium. So perimetrium is the outer layer and it is a serosal layer. It is a serosal layer. While the middle layer consists, uh, it is called as myometrium and it consists of the smooth muscles. It consists of smooth muscles and it is highly vascular layer. It is a highly vascular layer. Now, this myometrium, it is further classified into three layers. That is outer layer, middle layer, and inner layer. The myometrium layer of the uterus, it is further classified into three layers, outer layer, middle layer, and inner layer. So, outer layer, it consists of the longitudinal smooth muscle fibers, while middle layer, it consists of interlacing bundle of smooth muscle fibers while inner layer it consists of the circular plus longitudinal smooth muscle fibers so myometrium consists of smooth muscle it is a very vascular layer it is consists of longitudinal fibers interlacing fibers and circular bundle of fibers now the inner layer is called as endometrium so endometrium consists it consists of mucus secreting glands. It consists of mucus secretory glands. And actually, it is the site where there is a menstruation occur. All the changes during menstruation occur in the endometrium. So all cyclical, astrologically changes occur during menstruation and this layer so in the menstruation all the changes occur in the layer of the endometrium and this endometrium actually it consists of two further layer it consists of functional layer and basal layer so actually during fertilization this functional layer it become active and it it become more vascular and become thickened and ultimately it is uh, involved in the it become more active in the fertilization but in the absence of fertilization this functional layer it, it is start seeding out or we can say it is start breaking downward and it become uh, expelled through cervix and vagina in the form of menstrual blood in the absence of the menstrual uh, sorry in the absence of fertilization while this basal layer it monitor the functional layer function so student that's all about the perimetrium myometrium and endometrium now how these layer uh, the, uh, how these layer it is uh, and the so let's talk about the relations extension of the uterine layers now let's talk about the spread or extension of the uterine layers so uterine layers are the perimetrium myometrium and endometrium now as we discussed earlier the shape of the uterus it is a, it is pear like now now if we see the perimetrium so how how it is spreaded in the uterus now if we see the anteriorly so anteriorly is this is the fundus of uterus this is body of uterus and this is a neck of uterus or cervix now perimetrium anteriorly and uh, 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 urinary bladder while posteriorly it consists of the rectum so remember remember this point the, the anteriorly 
from uterus it consists of the urinary bladder while posteriorly it consists of the yes rectum now how this perimetrium basically it is spreaded now perimetrium anteriorly it cover the fundus it cover the body but it spare the neck of uterus anteriorly this perimetrium it cover the fundus of the uterus it cover the body of uterus but it doesn't but it not involve the neck of uterus it spare the neck of uterus while posteriorly perimetrium it it is spread it involve the fundus body and neck of uterus as well so anteriorly perimetrium cover the fundus body and along with that it cover the urinary bladder and through the urinary bladder it fold that is called vesico ureter that is called as vesico uterine folds are pouch so it form as that is form as anteriorly while posteriorly it cover the fundus of the uterus body of the uterus and neck of uterus and along with that it cover the rectum and it form it also cover the pouch of the uterus anteriorly so in a nutshell perimetrium cover fundus body anteriorly but posteriorly it cover the fundus body and neck of uterus as well while laterally it cover the fundus on both sides and it spear the body of uterus and neck of uterus okay so laterally it cover the both side of fundus but it doesn't involve the body of uterus and neck of uterus okay so that's all about the spread of perimetrium now let's talk about the myometrium myometrium it is spreaded in all four sides of the uterus so this myometrium it cover all four sides of the uterus so students that's all about the of the uterus. the important ligaments that is associated with the uterus how many ligaments are there now let's discuss so the uterine ligaments let's talk about uterine ligaments so the first ligament it is called as ovarian ligament the second ligament is called suspensory ligaments that is called as suspensory ligament it is also called an fundibulo pubic ligament and the third one it consists of the uh, broad ligament and at the last it consists of the cardinal ligament so what are the how many ligaments of the uterus that is ovarian ligament suspensory ligament broad ligament cardinal ligament ovarian ligament actually it hold the ovary lateral of the uterus while suspensory ligament it attach the ovary to the lateral the, while broad ligament it uh, hold the ovary fallopian tube and the uterus so that is called as broad ligament and it is called as broad ligament why it is called it it is a widest ligament out of ligament it is considered as a widest ligament is it hold the in the position of the so that is broad ligament and cardinal ligament cardinal ligament is ligament it means that this uterus uh, fallopian tube and ovary they are supported by the broad ligament so these are all are broad ligament below this broad ligament there is cardinal ligament in cardinal ligament it attach the cervix to the lateral wall of the pelvic wall okay so i will repeat it once again how many 
ligaments of uterus that is ovarian ligament, suspensory ligament, broad ligament, cardinal ligament. Ovarian ligament attach the ovary to the lateral wall while suspensory ligaments are those ligaments which attach the ovary to the lateral wall of the pelvic wall while broad ligaments hold the position of the and there is cardinal ligament below the broad below this broad ligament there is that's all about the uterus is it is the second part of the internal female genitalia so let's talk about the third internal female genitalia that is the fallopian tube that is called as fallopian tube fallopian tube is also called oviduct it is also called uterine tube it is also referred as salpinges so students the, in this diagram this whole structure from this from this area to this area it is that is a fallopian tube so fallopian tubes there there is one pair of fallopian tubes in the female there is one pair of fallopian tube in the female it means there is right fallopian tube and there is left fallopian tube students as you can see here this area that is called as the attached end that is called as attached end of the fallopian tube while this part is called free end of the fallopian tube now let me let's let me draw the diagram of the fallopian tube only so just see this fallopian tube here so students this is a fallopian tube as you can see here now this area that is the attached end it is called a attached portion of the fallopian tube is why it is so called attached to the uterine cavity or which attached to the body of the uterus and this portion is called that is free portion of the fallopian tube now let's talk about the parts of the fallopian tube now if we see from the if we move if we move from free portion to the attached portion like if we move from this portion to this portion uh, what are the parts included here so the first portion is called as infundibulum so infundibulum is the first portion of the fallopian tube from the free portion and the second por part of the fallopian tube is ampulla the third part of fallopian tube is isthmus while the last part of fallopian tube is called as the intramural portion it is called intramural portion or it is called as interstitial portion so now students this area as you can see here it is a funnel shaped structure and it is called as the infundibulum so this area is called infundibulum it look like as a funnel and this infundibulum it is continue with the finger like projection and that is called as the fimbri so what is fimbri fimbri is the finger like projection that is uh, what are the there is a opening that ostium this is a ostium and plural there will be ostium that will be called as ostia so outside so, 
the infundibulum is a funnel shaped structure of the fallopian tube which is continued with the finger like projection that is called as fimbri and the second part is called ampulla as you can see here the dilated portion of the fallopian tube this is called as the ampulla this dilated portion that is called as ampulla and actually it is the site for the fertilization don't forget the point the ampulla is the region in the fallopian for the fertilization while the third portion is called isthmus you, as you can see here the, the, there is some portion of the fallopian tube which is become narrow and constricted and that area it it is referred as isthmus so isthmus is the narrowest area within the fallopian tube and the fourth one is called intramural portion which is also called part of the fallopian fallopian tube that is called a interstitial portion it is worth noting it is live within as the intramural portion so how many tube that the first part is called infundibulum from the free end to the we are talking about the free, from the free end to the attached end so the first portion is infundibulum it is a funnel shaped structure it is continue with the fimbri the second is ampulla and it is the dilated and the most wide portion of the fertilization while the third portion which is constructed and narrow that is isthmus while the fourth portion that is called as intramural portion approximately 1 cm of 1 uh, cm part of fallopian tube it lies within the fallo within the uterine cavity and that is called uh, intramural portion or intestine remember students there is an area between the uterine cavity and fallopian tube there is an area which is called as the utero tubal junction this is called as utero tubal junction so the junction between parts of the uh, fallopian tube now let's talk about the micro anatomy of the fallopian tube that how many layers of fallopian tube consist or so micro anatomy of the fallopian tube now it, the fallopian tube consists of three layer outer layer it consists of middle layer and it consists of inner layer so outer layer it is a serosal layer middle layer it consists of circular muscle and longitudinal muscle so inner circular muscles while outer consists of the longitudinal muscles and inner layer it consists of the single layer of the columnar epithelial cells it consists of single layer of ciliated columnar epithelium and what is the main function of the cilia actually it is the cilia which is responsible to profil the secondary oocyte and push it to the uterine cavity so it consists of single layer of ciliated columnar epithelium and in between ciliated cell in between ciliated cells it consists of a spe specific cells which is called as pixels and what is the function of pixel pixels secrete the tubular fluid actually when secondary oocyte uh, release from the ovary
Now let's talk about the last part, part of internal female genitalia that is ovary. So there is one pair of ovaries in the female. It means there is right ovary and left ovary. And it is the only intra-abdominal structure which is not covered by the peritoneum. It is not covered by peritoneum. It is the only it is the only intra-abdominal structure which is not covered by the peritoneum and it is located on either side of the worm. It is located on either side to the worm. Now, if you see on histologically, what you will able to see? Now, see the, let, let's say, let's suppose this is a ovary. So, this portion of the uh, ovary that is called as hilum of the ovary it receives the blood supply and nerve supply now just outer out outer to the ovary it consists of an epithelium and that epithelium is called as germinal epithelium so the outer layer is germinal epithelium and it consists of the single layer of cobidases so there is single layer of cobidases in the germinal epithelium and remember this germinal epithelium it is not uh, helps in the formation of the germ cells it is just a it is just a layer and it is called a germinal epithelium consists of single layer of the cobidal cells out, out to the this germinal epithelium there is another layer that is present and that layer is called as visceral peritoneal layer so that layer is called as visceral peritoneal layer just deep to the germinal epithelium there is another layer as well and that layer is called as tunica albogenia. Tunica albogenia is a dense regular form of connective tissues. Now if we see the lumen of ovary, it is further classified into two parts. That is ovarian cortex, that is ovarian medulla. So in the ovarian cortex, there are a lot of follicles. While in ovarian medulla it doesn't contain any ovarian follicles but it contain a lot of connective tissues blood vessels and lymphatic vessels okay so it is uh, the lumen of ovary consists of ovarian cortex and ovarian medulla and ovarian medulla there is connected tissue blood vessel and lymphatic vessels while the ovarian cortex contain a lot of follicles now what is the main function of ovary the main function of ovary is to produce the ova and in turn this ova is it produce the estrogen and progesterone this estrogen it helps in the maturation of the follicles while progesterone it is involved in the early pregnancy so still until now we discussed the uh, ovary that is ovary uh, there is one pair of ovaries in the female and it is the only intra abdominal structure which is not covered by peritoneum it is lying in the both side of the worm and it consists of the uh, and if you see on histologically you will see that there is germinal epithelium that layer is called germinal epithelium which is the outer layer and it consists of single layer of cobidases out out to the germinal epithelium there is another layer that is called as visceral peritoneal layer and deep to the germinal epithelium there is another dense uh, regular form of connective tissue and that is called as tunica albogenia now if you see the lumen of the ovary it consists of ovarian cortex and medulla ovarian cortex consists of follicles while ovarian follicle doesn't contain any follicles but it contains a lot of connective tissues blood vessel and lymphatic vessel what is the main function of ovary? It is to produce OA and alter and turn this OA it produces estrogen and progesterone. This estrogen it helps in maturation and the follicles later and this progesterone it helps in the early pregnancy. Student that's all about the internal genitalia of the females. Hopefully you will get the lecture. Thank you so much.